Johnny Max with us here on the Sports Bash, appearing via the Boardwalk Honda Hotline, a little NFL, some Eagles news to dive into, and uh, always NFL happenings. John, how are you? Doing well. Did not hear uh, about the duster. I thought we were going to have services. Is there anywhere <laughs> I can send flowers? He said in lieu of flowers, he takes cash. That's right. I'll take a little bro- <laughs> or, or bro cream or something like that. Send it along. That, that, that's smart. That is smart. There flowers. Uh, I'd rather have the cash. Uh, a couple Eagles uh, things to touch on. Uh, Michael Bennett to plead not guilty if the uh, case reads uh, reaches trial. That's from his lawyer, Rusty Harden, today. And uh, I guess not a surprise there, correct? No, no surprise. Rusty Harden was pretty clear. Uh, when it first kind of came down, he first hired. He was first hired. That uh, we, we talked about it before. There's a lot of questions with this particular case and the fact that there's no video. Uh, really uh, comes down to witness testimony, and and uh, it's pretty clear if it ever goes to trial. Which I, as as Rusty also kind of mentioned, he he doubt that's going to happen. Uh, he's going to plead not guilty, but uh, it, there's just too many issues with this particular case. You can't imagine uh, the Houston District Attorney would waste the taxpayer money by bringing this to trial, but crazier things have happened. And obviously, when you talk about high-profile people, uh, the political aspect of it jumps into the equation. So that is something you also have to weigh. Now, they were pretty, uh, you know, uh, adamant that this just flat out didn't happen, right? He certainly didn't do anything, is what uh, Harden said. He said, I just don't think he did it. He certainly didn't do anything intentionally or negatively or recklessly push or hurt her now did something else happen to her from somebody else i just don't know so they're basically saying that somebody made is making this up it sounds like well i think what they're trying to say is there were a bunch of people uh trying to get on the field and evidently a number of them pushed to get on the field and perhaps this woman got injured but it wasn't from michael bennett uh, from, you know, maybe they were told somebody else, maybe they uh, thought it was Michael Bennett, it wasn't Michael Bennett. I, I think that is more of, of the, the, mm-hmm. the spin they're trying to take on it. Perhaps she was pushed, perhaps she was injured, uh, but it wasn't Michael Bennett, and, and maybe they thought it was because they were told he was in the group. Uh, that seems to be what they're kind of uh, trying to say. John, obviously, um, the, the the big thing with this, you know, the Eagles, I guess, are kind of waiting to see if they, you know, if for some reason he was guilty. Do you think the Eagles make some kind of decision that, that, that they move on from this or uh, do they stand by uh, Bennett at this stage? Well, as I said, I, I think the only thing that could make the Eagles move in a different direction as far as releasing him uh, or anything of that nature is a video surfaced. And it was a uh, horrific video. The fact of a uh, what you would imagine a six foot four, uh, two hundred seventy pound man running over a sixty six year old woman in a wheelchair. If right. that shows up, yeah, I think they would release him. Anything short of that, uh, no. I, and I don't. By the way, I agree with that. I don't think there's any reason uh, at this stage. There's no evidence to say that, that he should be uh, released or the team should move on from uh, I mean, that's – unfortunately, a lot of people like to jump to conclusions in this country, but it's innocent until proven guilty, and that's for Michael Bennett or anyone else. By the way, the charge of injury to an elderly includes no, uh, intentionally and knowingly in causing bodily injury to a person 65 years or older – carries a penalty of up to 10 years in prison and a $10,000 fine. So that's what uh, he's potentially staring at in the face here. Sports Bash Live, 97.3 ESPN. And uh, the Eagles lose another member of the secondary, maybe not quite as important as Patrick Robinson, but Jalen Watkins is on the way out. And he's a guy that uh, was here for the Chip Kelly regime. And, you know, I, I guess didn't really have a huge role so on this team. So much for that discounted return, right? No, he he didn't. But he was a very versatile player. And as far as, you know, the back end of the roster, uh, he was certainly a guy who could help you 
in in case sort of a, in case of emergency. Really breaks a glass and there's Jalen Watkins. He could play corner. He could play safety in a pinch. Uh, but it was clear. I, I mean, he was set to be a restricted free agent. He wasn't even unrestricted, but the Eagles did not tender him uh, because that would have cost too much money. Uh, so it was pretty evident that uh, he wasn't a, a, a you know, top-tier target as far as trying to bring him back. Uh, and, and the reality is they want to get better in that backup safety position, and that's a position you now have to look really hard at at, at number 32 overall if the Eagles decide to stay there. Uh, because Corey Graham, remember, uh, is obviously uh, mulling retirement and, and may not be back. Uh, he's 33 years old to begin with. Uh, but that third safety became very, very important in this defense. Uh, and Jalen wasn't going to fill that role. They don't have confidence in him doing that. But the Eagles want to fill that role so they can have the same kind of versatility, whether that's convincing Corey to come back again in August or if it's getting a younger body, as I said, at number 32 overall, or or even uh, trading down in the second round, whatever, they have to get some kind of body in at safety uh, for this team. Now, John, in trying to find that guy, if they go through the draft route, do they try to find a guy that's like pure safety, or is the trend now to go for those versatile guys, like we could project him here and we could project him there? Do they go for like a pure safety guy or a guy that they think can fill a couple of roles? Well, everybody is trying to find sort of the hybrid player uh, that could be a rover uh, for a lack of a better term. And the Eagles already have that with Malcolm Jenkins. So they're lucky from that perspective. However, obviously uh, Malcolm is aging as well, still playing at a very, very high level. Uh, but you would want to get sort of an heir apparent as well. So the more versatility you can have, uh, the better it is. And and we'll see. I've been waiting for offenses to sort of answer what defenses are doing in this league, Uh, and that's keeping sort of six defensive backs on the field and having that one guy that can play sort of a glorified linebacker role. Malcolm did it so well for the Eagles last season. Uh, but you can imagine, you know, if, if you start to go back to the old school mentality and you got a big offensive guard or offensive tackle getting to the second level uh, and, and, and blocking a, a safety, well, in theory, that's, that's very, very valuable to, to, to you as an offensive coordinator, as an offensive head coach. But I haven't seen that shift. Uh, and, and if anything, we've, we've talked about that as well, the devaluation of the running back position. Uh, maybe it starts to shift in the other direction. Haven't seen that yet, though. Uh, and really it's just 11 personnel, three receivers on the field or more. You can go up to four receivers uh, and, and people trying to spread the field, and, and, and that's what makes those guys like Malcolm Jenkins as valuable as they are. How about the new guy, Daryl Worley? Could he kind of uh, play a hybrid role? Well, a lot of people have projected Daryl as moving back to safety at some point, but he would be more of the traditional free safety, I would think. Uh, and and he, he, he has done very well in run support, uh, but I don't see him filling the role that somebody like Malcolm does. I, I would see him more as a, a Rodney McLeod type being on the back end uh, in coverage from that perspective, and he is a good tackler. So he, he could end up being sort of the Jalen Watkins type who can play corner and can play uh, safety in a pinch. Uh, and, and we'll see how it all shakes out. Obviously, right now, the Eagles are very, very deep at the cornerback position because that's what Worley is listed as, and they're not very deep at the safety position. John McMullen, 97.3 ESPN.com. Follow him on Twitter at JF McMullen here on the Boardwalk Honda Hotline. John, uh, there is uh, you know interesting stuff coming out of New England. I mean, are we starting to see the cracks in the Patriots? Or this is laughable to suggest that as long as Brady and Belichick are there, that there'll be issues. But you see Butler, 
who basically came out today said he wanted answers. He wanted to confront Belichick uh, during the game uh, about why he didn't play. Now there's some news coming out of New England that the longer that um, – uh, Gronkowski goes without committing to the team that the Patriots could possibly trade him. You know, uh, could that be a possibility? Are we starting to see some cracks in the Patriots' armor? Well, I, I don't think so as long as you mentioned. As long as Tom Brady continues to play at the level he has, they're going to be really, really good. The, the, uh, the supporting cast has changed dramatically over the years since he's become uh, one of the better players quarterbacks in football and really you know one of the top two or three of all time so I, I think everything will be fine the issue there is obviously at some point <laughs> it's just it, it at 40 years old I I mean the decline has to start and then yeah I think some of that other stuff starts to become more important because you are probably going to need a, a more well-rounded team he's not going to be able to carry things uh, forever, uh, but as, if he continues to play like he did last year as the MVP of the league, and even in the losing effort in the Super Bowl, he was phenomenal. Uh, arguably his best Super Bowl ever from an individual standpoint. Uh, if that guy shows up, they're going to be fine. Uh, as far as you start to question, I, I mean, that's the difference from the other kind of stuff is the difference from winning the Super Bowl and losing it in, in a close game like they did with, with the Eagles. I, I mean, if you think about sitting Butler, well, that's a mistake. I, I don't care if you had a bad practice week. If you look at what happened in that game, one of the you know plays that nobody talks about was that Nelson Aguilar third down conversion when Batamosi had him in the open field dead to rights tackle. Eagles would have punted the football. He misses. He blows the tackle. He's only out there because they're not playing Butler. I, I, I mean, you have to believe Malcolm Butler is going to make that tackle, and it changes the entire complexion of the game. So I, I think it's fair to ask those questions about why Bill Belichick did what he did. Uh, but as far as them being a significant contender, look, they're going to be. And, and even if they have to trade, I mean, Gronkowski's an interesting case because he's he's taken such punishment. He's thinking about retirement. He wants to be a wrestler. He wants to be a Hollywood star. I mean, he's a weird guy. Uh, but I, I don't think that's a trend by any stretch. John, before we get too far away, and yeah, the Gronkowski thing, I saw reports out there that said he might want, or would the Patriots consider trading him? Before we get too far away from the Eagles, I do want to ask you about Darren Sproles. Uh, is there any reason why or any word on when they might get something done, if all with Darren Sproles? Uh, we keep uh, thinking like, well, both sides want to get together, but we haven't seen anything yet. Yeah, I mean, that's it's it, it sort of that's what the second phase of free agency is. It slows down to a trickle. You saw a, a number of names signed today. You see it. Uh, it's it's value time. I, I don't think there's any. Remember, Darren is, is continuing his rehab when he's healthy uh, at his age. He, he doesn't show up for off-season work. So it, I, I don't think it, it's there's a, a necessary – sort of sense of urgency from the Eagles standpoint. I, I think both sides want something to happen. It seems like Darren wants to come back. The Eagles, by what Doug Peterson said at the meetings, they want him back. And I think as long as that is the case, uh, and remember from the other aspect, if you're worried about somebody swooping in, and signing Darren Sproles away, I mean, the value of a 35-year-old running back coming off a torn ACL, nobody's going to pay uh, a ton of money from that, even, no matter how dynamic Darren Sproles has been in the past. That's just the reality of the market. So I, I think that's one of those where it, it'll probably last past the draft, and, and, and once the Eagles decide where they are at the running back position, if they have a spot open, I think something will get done. So since you talk about the first wave and the second wave of free agency, uh, what was the free agent move that you'd rank as the best, the free agent signing that you'd rank as the best so far, now that that first wave is done and it's just the second ones that are going to bubble up? 
Well, are you talking about league-wise or Eagles-wise? No, I'll, go, I, I'll, I think I'll open it up to league-wise. Well, you can answer both, actually. Well, uh, league, league-wide, league I, I mean, just because it's so rare that a quarterback like Kirk Cousins gets the mark, it just never happens. Where uh, a quarterback with that kind of success uh, hits the market in his prime uh, because you, every other team – does it right and, and the Redskins screwed it up from the first franchise tag uh, and, and that's generally what happens quarterbacks like that don't get to the open market and that's why you saw what you saw with Kirk Cousins so it's hard not to rate him as, as number one that's a guy who's thrown for 4,000 yards three consecutive seasons his passer ratings 100 uh, and he's never played with a defense that's ranked better than 21st in the NFL and now he's going to the defense that was ranked number one last season so at least on paper that looks like a home run from the eagles perspective i i've said and this is really more the second phase is i think mike wallace is is a perfect signing for what this team needs uh and and obviously it's short term at his age uh but as far as obviously what the Eagles need is a field stretcher to open up things underneath for, for Jeffrey and Aguilar and Ertz. That's what Mike Wallace does. He still runs a four, four. Uh, he's, uh, I, I can't even tell you he's 10 times better than Torrey Smith as a player. Uh, it just makes this offense more dynamic and better. Since you put the Patriots on my brain a minute ago, do you think they'll draft a quarterback this year after trading away both Brissett and Jimmy Garoppolo last season? Yeah, it, it's it's a uh, possibility. They've even talked about they had they realized they need uh, to get in the young quarterback to groom. It would have been great if sort of Tom's uh, lifespan as a player ended just as Garoppolo was ready to take off. But life is is doesn't always end perfectly. They weren't able uh, to pull that off, so they definitely need a young quarterback. Some have even speculated they're thinking about Johnny Manziel. I don't believe that. Uh, but I, I do I do believe they want to get a younger body in there at quarterback because they do want to groom somebody if Tom Brady ever proves yeah. to be human. That would be interesting. You put Garoppolo, I mean, uh, Manziel there for like a year or two and uh, see if they can like Jedi mind trick him into being a uh, perfect human being. You know what I mean? <laughs> uh, well, I, I will give him credit. He he seems to have grown up a little bit. He's not on TMZ every day. He's doing the right things. He's he 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 did a very smart thing by working out at a couple different pro days uh, to get in front of sort of NFL decision makers. Uh, that was I thought pretty innovative of him to do. Uh, and he's playing in the spring league. Uh, started this week. Uh, so at least he's he's grown up a little bit, and, and he's not you know spending every waking day traveling from Vegas to Austin to Miami to Hollywood and 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 being on everybody's Instagram every night. So he he I, I do give him credit. There has been some progress. Uh, we'll see if it's enough to get him uh, another chance. Ultimately, I think he will. Obviously it'll be as a third string quarterback. And then you sort of work your way up from there and you got to prove yourself. John McMullen, the golf guest appear via the boardwalk Honda hotline. Follow him on Twitter at JF McMullen. You can hear him daily here with our NFL news and notes on the sports bash on 97.3 ESPN. Uh, and don't forget, check out all his off season Eagles and NFL coverage at 97.3 ESPN.com. John, have a great weekend, pal. Hey, thank you guys.